Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopro's Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you at 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Welcome to another edition of the EPL Breakdown for Saturday, December 29, 2018, the final slate for the 2009 calendar year. I'm desperately looking forward to this. I think this this slate is going to be an absolute blast. So let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Um, as always, we'll do a really quick schedule breakdown here. First, we have Everton traveling to Brighton. Huddersfield traveling to Fulham, uh, which is going to be a really, really boring game. Cardiff traveling to one of the league's hottest teams at the moment, Leicester City. Wolves traveling to the league's hottest team at the moment, Spurs. Newcastle traveling way, way, way down south into London to uh, take on Watford. And in the late hammer of the day, we have Arsenal traveling to Liverpool, which is going to be an absolute banger. So, yeah, let's uh, let's break down really into, break down into this very quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on the video here today because I think there's a lot of inf- not a lot of information, but the information that is uh, relevant uh, is uh, super important for this slate. So let's jump right in. Uh, Everton at Brighton. The most important thing to take from this uh, game is that Brighton are a far better team at home than they are away, and Everton are a far worse team away than they are at home. Now, conversely, if we flip that back, uh, a lot of people probably won't be buying too deeply into the notion that Brighton fully deserved that 1-1 draw with Arsenal, which they absolutely did. And a lot of people further will be drawn into the notion that uh, Everton deserved that 5-1 uh, against uh, Burnley, which they did. But the truth of that is, now that Everton are traveling down to Brighton, we should expect a much more similar result to what we just saw uh, as Arsenal taking the trip down south. Uh, so this isn't a game that I think should you should, excuse me, jump on instantly, especially for G. GPP. Uh, the only real place I'd jump on this for GPP would be the Brighton side, and I would start a lot of that with uh, Matt Ryan and uh, his salary this slate at only 4.5k. There's no denying that Everton are really good. So, like, I'm not sitting here telling you that Everton are bad, they're going to get shut out. That's not the case at all. The situation is that Everton's really, really bad letting in goals. They're going to concede. They, they've they only kept one clean sheet all season. And they have a, a very expensive and highly owned defensive core. So there's a lot of reasons already not to jump on the Everton uh, defensive stack in GPP, even before we consider uh, what a buy-high scenario we have with Everton this slate. So furthermore, when we're looking back at uh, Brighton, uh, chances are at home, Brighton are going to be playing a lot better than they would away. Everton is going to be playing worse than they would be at home. So we can kind of judge this as a little bit of a GPP swing towards Brighton. They don't really have a lot of good stacking options at the back. Uh, the issue with that is a lot of the Brighton defensive options are mostly uh, cash, low floor kind of, I'm looking for five fantasy points plays, which just won't get done in GPP, even with these salaries. Uh, now, whenever we get closer to the mid, field we can start to look at a few different things like Solly March is an option from slate to slate 7.7k kind of hamstrings you in terms of salary so you may not want to really stack him with anything and just kind of take him as a solo one-off in a different format you can even get away with him in cash I think his salary is a little bit expensive for cash but in uh, terms of GPP uh, he'll be low owned and uh, have lots of upside from only seven I shouldn't say from only 7.7k he should be closer to 8k or more but uh, we can take that discount where it happens and Glenn Murray is interesting I am a little bit concerned in terms of his minutes. They haven't been as solid as I've been looking for in terms of uh, in terms of his minutes. They haven't been as solid uh, as we need from someone to be relevant in either format. Uh, he could get a goal in GPP, and he's still only going to finish with 12.513 fantasy points. Uh, if he doesn't score, he's absolutely pointless for either format. So there's no cash floor. Uh, there isn't really a lot for GPP for the forward there. So if I was going to go anywhere in this game, really, it would be uh, Matt Ryan or uh, Solly March. Now, the main reason not to take Everton here, uh, there's lots of reasons to take Everton. They're pretty straightforward. Um, Everton, are, in reality, are one of the best DFS teams in the league. A lot of this has to do with the fact that they're never going to be the highest stone, they're never going to be the most expensive, and they're always going to have an attacking role where if they continue this rate of conceding basically every single game, the, they are going to need to score at least twice to win games, and they are more than capable to uh, score 
twice, and they always go out looking to win games. Everton are not a team uh, like uh, the Jose Mourinho's of the past where they sit back and defend and hope to kind of sneak out a win through defense. Uh, that's not the case here at all. Everton are going to go for it. They're going to leave themselves open, however. And while I don't really like uh, the 90-minute targets on either side, I think it does open up a lot of different doors. Now, Dengue is still an incredible play, uh, even uh, for this late 6.3K away from home. His cross count is just too high. His set pieces, rolls is too high. Uh, he is a very skilled player playing on a very skilled team, playing against a far, far inferior opponent. Now, if you want to rely on the Brighton's at home, Everton's away script, that's more of a GPP script or maybe like a low floor cash play if you're looking for something like Matt Ryan. Uh, but again, I wouldn't risk that in cash this late. I think that's just a little bit unnecessary. And uh, like Sigurdsson and Dingier are both excellent uh, options. But uh, the big problem here is their ownership's going to be through the roof, especially after last slate. Now, Sigurdsson is a good player. He is a great option from slate to slate, especially for cash. But he's going to be getting ownership this slate, especially in GPP, to the point that it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to take him. His ceiling is rare. Um, now, that being said, his floor is so substantial that it, it kind of makes way for the lack of consistent ceiling. Uh, but I think, again, a lot of the, this slate I'm predicting, my prediction is that a lot of people are going to be buying into cigarettes and expecting a ceiling performance in both formats. And that just isn't going to happen against Brighton away from home. Uh, is he going to have his floor? Yeah, absolutely. 12 fantasy points really is never that big of an ask for Sigurdsson if he's managing to get his on the go. Uh, but in terms of a GPP play, I would definitely fade Everton in this slate. They're going to be way too much of a buy high, and there's going to be enough reasons going against them to do well for them to actually have that much of an edge. Can they do well? Yes, absolutely. Are they fitting well into the slate? Sure. Uh, but they don't add up to Spurs. They don't add up to Liverpool, and their ownership is still going to be high enough to compete maybe even be higher than Spurs. It really wouldn't surprise me if uh, people over-own Everton this site, especially in GPP. So in terms of the scoreline, we're going to say a 1-1 score here. Maybe 2-1 if Brighton can sneak something out here. Uh, Everton should score. Brighton should score. I think Brighton has the higher chance not only to score once, but to score twice. And in, in all truth, like any game any team that's capable can shut out another team. Everton aren't capable of shutting out teams at the moment. And Brighton are, even against Everton. So there, there is a ceiling there. If it hits, uh, Matt Ryan could be looking at a 6-8 to eight save uh, win. Clean sheet's a pretty heavy ask. Uh, but if he can manage to keep this under 1, uh, the, he should be fine. So I'm going to say a 1-1-2-1 one, 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 uh, victory for Brighton, if anything. But uh, yeah, I really like that 1-1 one, one draw. And... Yeah, there's not really much of a ceiling or floor outside of maybe Sally March for this game. Next game on the slate, we have Huddersfield traveling to Fulham. This is going to be a very bizarre game. Uh, Fulham finally got a clean sheet last game. Uh, it took them literally, and I mean literally forever. Uh, but uh, they, they finally met, I shouldn't say last game, excuse me, against Newcastle. They got a 0-0 draw. And to give you an idea, that's basically all they got from that game. So um, legit, they didn't have a clean sheet in like 21 straight English Premier League games ranging from multiple seasons. Fulham is statistically the worst team in the league, uh, both well, see, the, the the real kicker in this game is that basically Fulham and Huddersfield are the one and two worst offenses in the league. That isn't entirely uh, statistically true. Uh, Huddersfield is the worst offense in the league. That is statistically certifiably true. But in terms of Fulham, that isn't exactly the case. They're just converse, convert, conversationally uh, the worst team in the league in terms of attack and defense. Defense, they're unquestionably the worst team in the league. Uh, like there isn't really a lot to target in terms of Fulham uh, unless you want to try and take the cheap Chal Callum Chambers route, which even then he isn't that cheap anymore and he isn't really putting up the numbers. Now this is fine, but my concern is that that's more of a ceiling that comes with the clean sheet that happened. So I'm not really looking at the Callum Chambers as much anymore as I was in earlier slates or earlier weeks in December. Uh, but uh, generally across the, the board here, they're 
it's tough, right? So Fulham are at home, so they should have lots of options going for them. Uh, Huddersfield just aren't that incapable of a side that they should get blown out. Now, Shirley hasn't been scoring at a rate that like drives it home, but if he, this is what he gets with a goal. Like he gets like the serious pushing twenty fantasy points with just a goal because there's a really good chance he's getting four to five fantasy points already. Uh, so if he can find a goal, that's awesome, viable. I don't mind Ryan Sessegnon at all. I think he's super playable. Um, he should be getting the 90 minutes again. He scored last slate. Uh, yeah, Sari, going down the list here, it gets less interesting. He's taking a little bit of the set pieces, though, putting in a few more balls. But, yeah, there's just nothing really to, to jump on there. Less than uh, four fantasy points consistently just isn't the, the draw for me. And Mitrovic, again, he should be... He should be the guy this late, but the problem is he's, his goal scoring is just completely evaporated. He had one of the craziest starts in league history and then just completely fell off the face of the earth. So again, like there's no real cash value from Fulham this late. There should be, but there just isn't. So I'm not really looking there. Uh, but in terms of GPP, if you want to land on some Fulham and GPP, I, I don't hate it. Uh, their salaries are definitely accessible, especially someone like Sherla at only 5.8K. Uh, it is very far away from my favorite plays this slate. Like, don't get me wrong. Both these offenses are so bad and both these defenses are so bad. It should be like an ultimate crapshoot of cancel outs where they finish 1-1-0-0. Nobody finds value. Nobody finds a ceiling. Nobody finds a floor. Nobody finds real DFS relevance. If you literally X this game out, don't worry about it. There's so much valuable options across the board in every other game that this game just immediately doesn't present very much. Outside of maybe a goaltender play because the offenses are so bad. Uh, if I was to go on either side of that, it would probably be the Losel side. Despite Huddersfield being away and not being very good away from home. Uh, Fulham are just bad, period. So uh, if you are looking for a little bit of an edge there, I don't mind 4.3 Losel. Either format, honestly. It isn't really the safest cash play, but most definitely not one of the riskiest. Like uh, I'm not sure if that makes much sense. But uh, in terms of the top play, he isn't it. But in terms of the bottom, he's definitely not the worst play either. So especially from 4.3K against Fulham. Uh, so yeah, that's really my take this game. I'll say another 1-1 draw here. Uh, maybe one nothing either way. I'd probably go the Huddersfield side of that. Uh, but I'd be really surprised if this game tops uh, two, go two total goals. Like if it's 2-1, I'll be really surprised just because both these teams are so bad, especially Huddersfield. If Huddersfield scores more than a goal, I'll be very impressed. Uh, you can always rely on Philip Billing at this stage at only 6K. With Aaron Moy out, Philip Billing is the vocal point of this offense. His salary is getting to a point that's a little bit concerning for me. I would much rather take him at the uh, the 5K range. Uh, way more viable, as you can see where he's been. But he's more than he's still very acceptable at only 6K, going up against the league's worst team in Fulham. So I have no issue with that. The real key here is to full to fade the Huddersfield forwards. They're not scoring, period. Uh, they haven't even scored at home yet this season, so just simple fade there. Uh, yeah, let's go one nothing Huddersfield, 1-1 one, one draw. Next game on the slate, we have Cardiff traveling to Leicester. This is, again, another very simple, straightforward game. Cardiff are l quite literally one of the worst EPL teams in league history away from home at this moment. Uh, absolutely atrocious. We can blindly lock in almost any Leicester player at this at this moment and uh, really have no issue with them in either format. Uh, I think James Madison is an excellent play at 8.1K either format. Uh, James Madison and Jamie Vardy is probably one of my favorite all-around stacks this slate. Viable for either format. That's how bad Cardiff is away from home. I'm a little bit less bullish on Jamie Vardy for cash, uh, but for uh, cash I have absolutely no problem with James Madison. If Albrighton can keep up some 90-minute games, I also have no issue with him. Uh, his goal was worth 12 so he still would have finished around six but honestly six to ten fantasy points isn't that big of an ask against cardiff uh if you're looking at his salary i think
think you may get a little bit uh, what's the salary sensitive and you may not be as interested at Albrighton from 7.5K. But Cardiff are just so bad. There's everything to target here. Uh, Smichael, Leicester's coming off beating City and Chelsea. So, like, I'm not sitting here telling you that they're going to be the least owned teams of the slate. And I'm also not saying that they're going to deserve their ownership. Neither of those statements are true. However, uh, they're playing against an absolutely garbage team. They're not the most expensive players on the slate, and they should still have a floor and a ceiling for either format. So if you want to kind of uh, say ownership be darned and take them as still of a buy-high scenario, both socially and uh, rather salary-wise, I prefer seeing uh, Albright and closer to the 6.5K and uh, Vardy and Masson being on the other side of the 8K. Uh, I still really like uh, Leicester this slate an awful lot. Um, it's tough because Leicester is the reason they did so well against Chelsea and Man City is that Leicester is built to play super superior opponents that are going to come at them stretch themselves thin and then Leicester can counterattack. Cardiff's not going to do that Cardiff's not going to completely stretch themselves silly they're going to try and play the counter attack game as well and in a lot of times when this happens, Leicester just isn't as successful. So while I do like them, I think there is some warrant to fading them. And in that fade, that doesn't necessarily drop on ownership to Cardiff. That doesn't make Cardiff better. It just makes Leicester worse. A lot of Cardiff's issue revolve around them, them just not being a good enough team across the board. Uh, they don't really have very many DFS options. Uh, they're mainly a center back team. They don't really play with many wing backs. Uh, their set pieces are very low. Uh, so yeah, this is this should be a fairly a fairly low skilled, low scoring game, which makes me like Smichael more uh, and chase the floors rather than ceilings on Leicester. Uh, a lot of that again, Leicester rarely actually hits ceilings. A lot of Leicester requires, a lot of Leicester ceilings, excuse me, require the rest of the slate to crap off and have Leicester's two goals stand out as be like being the most productive goals from the slate. And unless Tottenham and Liverpool all fail to score less than two goals, there's not really much point in spending down on Leicester. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I, I again, Cardiff aren't inept. They do have options. The C Camarasa, his salary is just too much. I'd rather go with Billing. I think yeah, Billing makes me more sense. And like Bobby Reed, Josh Murphy, the usual suspects here. You can kind of roll with all of them in GPP. In terms of cash, there just isn't the kind of floor. And Lester doesn't provide a production for a floor. So whenever we go looking here, there just isn't enough floor to really shoot for. Uh, now ceiling wise, different story. Uh, someone I, I went on and was fairly popular last slate was Kadeem Harris who did absolutely more than enough from only uh, his salary of only 3.2k getting to 8k, 8 fancy points which was honestly relevant for either format because it allowed you to spend up on Salah and Harry Kane in GPP or in cash it just allowed you to scrape by with your near double digits. Uh, so yeah, um, I think Smichael is probably one of my safer keeper plays. The slate uh, at least just for cash. Uh, he, he does stand to concede, but the win is super solid here. I really don't see Cardiff doing anything away from home as they haven't all season. So I will say 2 nothing Leicester ceiling. Uh, probably a one nothing Leicester win. Next game on the slate, we have Wolves traveling to Spurs. So the general notion here is that Wolves are a super defensive team and they've kept these types of games close all season. You can either buy into that or go against that and try and deal with the 40% ownership across the Spurs board. I'll level again. I'll, I'll try and be as blatantly honest here and take a stand despite it may end up making me look wrong. Spurs are not going to score six goals again. This this isn't going to continue as is, let alone against a team like Wolves. Now, am I saying Wolves are going to come out here and smash? No, absolutely not. Uh, I'm also saying Spurs aren't going to come out here and smash. And their ownerships and salaries both allude to the notion that Spurs are going to come out here and smash. So, 
that's that's really it. You can either take the Spurs smash side or the Spurs not smash side. And while the Spurs not smash sm- side may seem uh, a little bit risky, it is. When you start over-owning Liverpool this slate, uh, which I think is one of the sharper options to go kind of Man City on Liverpool, uh, you really don't need much Spurs. And I do very passionately believe Spurs will draw the more ownership uh, mostly because of uh, their in- obscene goal totals for the past few games. And a lot of people will still forget how good Liverpool is doing. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to take some Rio Patricio, I don't hate it uh, for either format. It allows you to spend up, and uh, he should give you a pretty solid floor for cash. Uh, but that's, of course, bought into the notion that uh, Spurs won't be going smash. Uh, Trippier, uh, this sh- if you're bought into the notion that this could be a low-scoring game, I think Trippier is very relevant for a floor play. I'm not really uh, comfortable playing paying that much in cash, uh, but it isn't the worst idea. Um, it's like, how do you want to take the Spurs midfield? Uh, Sun should be leaving for the Asian Cup soon enough, and I'm just not... I'm not paying that much for him. 11K. Uh, I don't care if that's salary sensitive. People can call me a fool. I'm sorry. Like, <clears throat> if you want double digits, that's fine. Like, there's going to be lots of places to get double digits this late. But, yeah, like, 50 fantasy points from 11 goals isn't even that good. I'll just throw that out. It's obviously not bad. It's obviously a, a fairly solid outing by a good player. But, it, like, what are we really asking for here from 11K against Wolves uh, from that ownership? Now, Christian Eriksen, uh, definitely viable, continues to be a great option for double digits. And when we're only dealing with 8.3K, that's when we can start to like, okay, it doesn't matter the salary. Like 11K, come on, we're going to 11K. The Sun's probably not even playing 90 minutes. That's, I think, the real kicker for me. And paying over paying over 10k for someone not playing 90 minutes is just foolish in my book so i'm not interested in that uh but uh yeah if Deli ali's out i think there could be a little bit more warrant to it but there's just so many more minutes issues and lack of upsides from guys like lucas mora who required a goal uh i guess that's actually half decent for his goal this is a little bit more what i'm expecting like gets a goal and two fantasy points outside the goal gets the goal 1.3 fantasy points outside the goal so like yeah um now in terms of wolves i think the defensive stacks in play uh especially from the salaries like 3.8 and 4.5 spurs aren't the best team in the league and they'll take their foot off the pedal every so often so yeah i would like to say matinho at 4.8k is a solid play but his floor has dropped significantly in recent weeks to the point that it's like you have to really start to question if he is that consistent kind of cash play we were taking in the past because it's Spurs. This isn't Fulham or, or Brighton away or Cardiff away or something like that. Like this is Spurs. So we just can't jump on that and expect a solid floor. And I think Jimenez does hold some really solid GPP relevance. Uh, maybe if you want to stack him up with Tino, you can get away with that. Or maybe um, Jimenez with uh, one of the wing backs and hope to get across that way. Uh, but yeah, I do think Jimenez holds some uh, some fairly solid relevance for this slate. Uh, but it isn't the first place I would look. Um, I don't like it. I'm just going to say it. I'll level with it. Like, legit. Um, that's 24. 24- five 24 25 fantasy points he got five fantasy points outside that there's a goal with two odd fantasy points outside of that an assist with 1.2 fantasy points outside of that um a goal and assist which is 18 19 fantasy points three or four fantasy points outside of that uh a goal with 18 that's six fantasy points finally and it took forever to find it here um 25 from a goal okay so again like back in the arsenal chelsea there and the start of december was a little bit different story his ceiling just isn't there anymore is the floor yeah sure it isn't even that good though from 11.4k like i'm i'm sorry you're gonna have to pay me money to make me play harry kane over salah for 1k difference like there's just no rationale 
to that whatsoever for me. Uh, now, I'll talk about Liverpool in a second, but yeah, it's just Harry Kane is probably the most overhyped forward in the modern game. Like, completely irrelevant and useless without someone next to him passing him the ball or him to pass the ball to. Like, completely incapable, where Salah will literally do it all himself. So, yeah. 2-1 Spurs. Uh, I do think they will win. I do think they will score more than once. But I think other teams will score just as much as them, if not more, and have more condensed 90-minute production from their role players than maybe Erickson's the only person I would lock in as like someone you could definitely use in either format, preferably cash. Uh, but yeah, that is my Spurs take, 2-1 Spurs. Next game of the slate, we have Newcastle traveling to Watford. This game should be really, 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 really DFS relevant <laughs> across the board. Um, so, yeah, let, let's just break it down from position to position. Ben Foster's in an incredible place to sleep because Newcastle are not scoring at a rate that should make anyone panic, let alone a team like Watford at home. Now, is Watford a team even at home that we should look for defensively? No, absolutely not. But it's there because Newcastle have been so poor attacking. Now, on the other side of that, um, DeBraca has kept most games this season really close. And when he hasn't, he still managed to find a way to not finish negative. So, yeah, I have absolutely no issue with either of these keepers. Uh, probably keep them to GPP. Uh, if you want, I think you could get away with Holobos and Ben Foster in cash. I'm definitely less excited about that. I'd rather go Smichael than Foster by far or even spend way, way down uh, than uh, on uh, someone like Foster. But the, it still remains to be said that like the the defensive stack could be super, super valuable here. Uh, the three-way defensive stack for Watford. It's tough again because before the break, guys like Del Feo and Pereira were absolutely tearing everything apart. Especially Del Feo, his previous two games, I'll even say three games, has been three of his best games since he's joined Watford. So if you think that form it will continue, by all means jump on board. I'm not as interested, especially from 7.4K. I'd much rather take 6.9 if I had to, or even drop down to someone like Matt Ritchie. Uh, for either format, uh, it's really hard to deny those cross counts. Now, it would be nice if he could turn this into a goal, uh, but it just isn't happening, unfortunately. So you probably have to keep him to cash for a lack of ceiling. And in terms of uh, forwards, Rondon was fun when he was 5, 6K, not 7.4K. And a lot of that has to do with he doesn't play 90 minutes a lot, along with a lot of the Newcastle players. Uh, but yeah, maybe Troy Deeney, like at 5K, you're, you're basically biting a bullet that's for sure and you're not getting a whole lot of ceiling but geez when he's at home Newcastle are always or excuse me Newcastle Watford are always a threat at home always 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 a threat for goal scoring at home so yeah I have no issue uh, with some Watford guys I would probably just keep it to Holobos and Cash uh, maybe some prayer in GPP if you want but uh, tough low scoring game Probably another 1-1, one, one, one nothing either way. Probably the Watford side. It also wouldn't surprise me to see it be a 2-2, two, 3-2 two, two game. Uh, just because Watford tend to let it in so many goals while at the same time are excellent at scoring. So, let's say Newcastle won't win uh, and there will be more than... And there will be at least uh, two goals in the total game. I'm not saying one each or anything like that. There will be two total goals and Newcastle will not win. Yeah, I like that. Final game of the slate. We have easily the the, the game of the weekend. Uh, Arsenal traveling to Liverpool. Uh, any way you want to go about this, Arsenal are one hundred percent. Arsenal are one hundred percent there for the taking, and Liverpool are easily the best team in the league right now. Um, 
for once Allison may be looking at a legitimate floor and ceiling, Arsenal should still get two to three, maybe even five shots on net. And if Allison manages to stop all of them, that could take him from either cash relevant to literally the takedown keeper of the slate. So I have no issue with Allison either format. I'd prefer him in GPP just because Arsenal are probably going to score. And you could probably get a little bit more upside from some other goaltenders who are looking at a better chance at a clean sheet and more saves. Uh, so yeah, Trent Alexander Arnold, uh, again, if you want these, these defensive salaries are pretty eating. They're not easy to do. Basically, Erickson's going to be your top out guy after you get both six guy six K guys in there. So I'm not as excited about that. Uh, but really where I think a lot of your particular at home exposure and ownership should come this slate is from, uh, either Shakiri or Salah, uh, absolute bangers. Um, either format, stack them both in GPP, take one or the other in cash. I wouldn't recommend taking them both in cash because that, generally speaking, eats every cent you have for salary. So there's no real reason to take them both. I think I like Shakiri more this slate. Uh, a lot of that has to do with, they're both great plays. Shakiri's taking a lot of the set pieces, especially if Milner isn't playing. And I think a lot of people will be on Salah. His ownership will still be really high. Is it worthwhile? Absolutely. He he should still be one of the top plays for this slate. But in terms of an edge play, I think Shakiri as a pivot play makes all the sense this slate. And I absolutely love it for either format. Uh, I have no issue with it, especially when you consider how many people are going to be taking Harry Kane. Uh, it's just an excellent discount uh, for someone who offers more floor, really, uh, and just as much upside, if not more of an upside, going against a team like Arsenal, who have conceded in every single away game this season. So, yeah, again, there's... There's lots to say Amamang is awesome, but there's also lots to say Liverpool are great and good enough to make him not cash relevant and barely GPP viable. So, yeah, I'm not crazy about Arsenal uh, across the board. They're going to concede, so we can basically cross them out for GPP uh, in terms of a de defensive ceiling. Liverpool don't offer enough situations or production to really make a solid floor, and Arsenal don't have a floor as is. Uh Really, they're, they don't really have a solid set piece taker who's consistent enough. Exaka is the only player that comes even remotely close to that. And yeah, 11 uh, crosses is great from nine corners, except when he plays 90 minutes the game before that against easily the worst team in the league and gets no crosses and barely takes a shot on that or does anything at all for that matter. So like, yeah, it's, it's important here to consider what Arsenal actually bring to the table, which is incredibly little, uh, especially when they're going against Liverpool, especially when they're against home, especially when they're against home going against Liverpool. So yeah, I, I 3 nothing Liverpool, 3-1 if uh, they're going to concede at least three goals uh, for Liverpool. I think uh, Shakiri is going to be one of the plays of the slate, if not the play of the slate. And Sal is still going to be fine. Probably my favorite uh, like major tandem uh, cash, or excuse me, cash. Uh, my, my favorite tandem GPP stack this slate is to get Shakiri, Vardy, Madison, and Salah all into the same card. If you can manage that for GPP, I think that's an incredible floor to start with. Uh, you're going to have to desperately spend down everywhere else, including your goaltender, which in many cases includes going against uh, the uh, excuse me, going against Spurs. Uh, but uh, yeah. It's not the easiest thing to do. You may have to pivot out one. Maybe Jamie Vardy is probably who I'd pivot out because uh, that would allow you to start spending up a little bit more on Keeper, in particular the 5K range, which I, I think is uh, slamming. Uh, maybe not so much the Pickford idea, but uh, the low 5K, which like uh, the Foster, the uh, Allison, and the Smichael, I think are all three solid Keeper plays to slate. Uh, and then if you, you want to spend up in uh, cash, I think that that should be done at the defense defensive side of the ball. Um, all three of them, either or, take all three, whatever works. 
wait and see what else comes to the table here in terms of defensive value uh, for the weekend uh, once lineup lock comes through. I don't mind the idea of someone like Chris Lowe if uh, he's on and Drum is not. Uh, Zanka leads Huddersfield in scoring right now, which is saying a lot. Uh, after his goal again last slate. So, yeah, I guess if you're looking for someone who has goal upside, there's literally no denying Zanka does uh, because he's leading Huddersfield right now. So, yeah, that's uh, it's hard to say for the defense if you want to spend up or not. That's really going to be my decision this slate because if you do, that cuts out the Harry Kane, the Salah, and all the other heavy salaries, basically down to an Erickson. Uh, maybe an Erickson or a Madison or a Shakiri, one of those three. Uh, so, yeah, it's tough, but uh, I'm going to have to wait close to the lineup lock to get a better idea what direction to go there. But, yeah, like I said, uh, at least three goals from Liverpool, and I'll be surprised if Arsenal score more than once. So I'll settle on 3 one 4 one Liverpool. So, yeah, that is my video for today. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Uh, make sure to hit me up on Twitter, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, uh, Sir Robert Six and all the main sites. Uh, if you have any questions, send me a message. Uh, make sure to check us out at rotopros.com. Articles. Check out all our articles we have. Uh, all free. Uh, get over on our Slack. Sign up. Uh, membership. Pay it out. It's worthwhile. Especially NBA is absolutely slaying this uh, season. It's incredible. So make sure to get over. Check us out. We're doing good things. Uh, thank you very much, Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond, Sir Robert Six. Like, comment, subscribe, rotopros.com. Hopefully, see us at the top this weekend, everyone. Much love, much love, good luck.